four weeks into the season. We're coming into the fourth week of the college basketball season, I know. Getting closer and closer to the end of non-conference play. A lot of teams are trying to prove themselves. A lot of teams did not prove themselves over this week. And we got some crazy stuff during this week. Uh, let me tell you. Florida, they lost to Texas Southern. They got blown out by Texas Southern. And then to add, add on to the misery, they just lost to Maryland. A Maryland team that just recently parted ways with their head coach. Yeah, that Florida. So, uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the top 25 is going to look like, in all honesty, with the way things went today. Um, if you watch that Texas Tech-Tennessee game, though, oh my goodness. One of the worst games I think, uh, I think we've seen in a while. There's been some bad ones this year. There, I mean, just poor shooting. Everybody was just not... It was, yeah, and I thought the score looked normal... Because I thought things were fine, you know, going into the half, you know, it was like 25, 23 at half, which isn't that bad of a score, you know, going into half, but it just got pretty bad in the second half. We're talking hilarious moments in the second half. And yes, James Madison, they did beat Virginia. Remember when Virginia was good? Yeah, I, I do too. It really is a shame because Virginia actually has some decent wins. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about one of the teams they beat here when we break down some of these games. Um, let me go. Let me go over the rest of these um, highlights from this week real quick. Um, Washington, what's going on in Washington? I have no idea. Somebody tell me what's going on because this is the third straight game that's either been canceled or rescheduled. I don't know. It might. It's apparently all of Washington's players are vaccinated. At least that's what I read from somewhere. All these players are vaccinated, so I have no idea what's going on here. I don't know. Did somebody else get COVID? Did, 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 you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out because Washington has. I don't, I, it might be a conspiracy theory at this point. I'm thinking, you know, because three tough opponents in the past week. They haven't played them. Washington has played none of these moments. Now, we can't, obviously, we can't discredit COVID, you know, but, I mean, it, it's definitely something to think about because Washington, you know, they haven't really played very well this year, and these are, like, three of their toughest games on the schedule, Arizona, UCLA, and Gonzaga, and all three of those teams, you know, have had big weeks, you know, bouncing Gonzaga bouncing back Arizona in a thriller against Illinois. I'm, t I'm telling you, that Arizona team is stacked. Definitely, definitely a stacked team. Should be at the top ten. Maybe close to the top five, in my opinion, because, I mean, they're just that good. It's that UCLA-Arizona game in, a, in, I think, about a week and a half or so. Or, t no, like two, two and a half weeks. Excuse me. That one might be very, very fun. Of course, you know, Purdue will not be the number one team this week. They got beat by Rutgers. And Seton Hall, they took down my Texas Longhorns in a game in which Texas only made one three-pointer. Just one. Yeah, I don't like it either. I don't like it. I, I, I don't, I, I, I can't understand it. I don't know what's wrong with these preseason top 10 teams struggling because we're going to talk about the next one in here in a moment here. But Auburn, um, Bruce Pearl, he got suspended, you know, for that um, investigation that happened, you know, that, you know, the NCAA investigated Auburn. Of course, they found the guy who did whatever he did, and I forgot what it was because it's irrelevant now at this point. But he's suspended. He was got suspended for their game against Nebraska on Saturday which Auburn easily took care of Nebraska, and I believe, I don't know what their next game will be. I think it's on a Wednesday or something like that, but it's against the team that does not matter right now. So those two games, you know, it is what it is. It's not really too much of a punishment. But then upsets on Saturday. It was a stacked Saturday. You know, if you were around for it, Kentucky lost to Notre Dame. I'm sitting here befuddled. Oklahoma blew out unbeaten Arkansas as well. I'm, I'm just completely befuddled. Ohio State, we're going to talk about Ohio State a little bit more here in a minute, but they beat up on Wisconsin. 
I, it was one of definitely one of the games that I watched on Saturday in which Wisconsin was just beaten up by you know Ohio State. And we're we're talking the script has been flipped. You know, there's some Big Ten teams that are looking kind of sus. You know, I think I thought you know things were going to get a little bit better. You know, for some of these Big Ten teams, but Purdue is. You know, barely hanging on. They barely hung on today against NC State. You know, um, and they lost the Rutgers. And then you got teams like Texas that just can't. You know, te- teams like Texas and Kentucky who can't win games against power conference teams for some reason. Yet they can beat up on, you know, lower ranked teams and stuff like that. But they can't beat the teams that matter when it comes to your resume. You know, for a power team, for a, for a major team. In college basketball, the the big boy wins. You need the big boy wins, and neither of those two teams have it. Um, I don't think Arkansas had any either, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I, it, it's befuddling to me. Crazy stuff here as we keep going here down the list. Um, University of Arkansas Little Rock. Um, this pertains more to basketball here, so I'm going to conclude it here. They're moving to the Ohio Valley Conference next year. So that is a great get for the Ohio Valley Conference. Ohio Valley has been kind of struggling lately. If you've been following you know, the channel and if you've been following Real Life, it, it, it's been a troubling time for the Ohio Valley Conference. So this is a great get. You know, you, um, Little Rock obviously got... Basically, essentially, they got kicked out of the Sun Belt. That's not going to be. They're not going to word it that way. They got kicked out. They got kicked out, and they have to find some place to go. And the OVC was the place to go. Unfortunately, I mean, uh, you know, there were other targets for UALR, but ultimately, the OVC was the correct choice. Excuse me. At Baylor, oh my goodness, Baylor. Y'all did not have to do that to Villanova. Villanova only had 36 points. They had 15 at halftime. They were shooting pretty bad out there. They were shooting, what, maybe like 20% from the field in this game? The Wildcats? And this has got to be one of the worst performances by Villanova I think I've seen in, you know, in my time watching Villanova. You know, this was bad. Baylor whipped them. And a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, where was the scoring yet? You didn't watch the game. You didn't get You didn't watch the game. A defensive clinic. We're talking Villanova had shots there. They had shots there. Everybody was just chucking up stuff, and it just was not falling. And that Baylor defense was relentless. Very, very relentless. Like It felt like there were 10 guys on that court watching this game. Like They were all over the ball, all over it. Unbelievable! Again, okay, uh, I think I think we kind of knew that this team should have been, you know, up there weeks ago when they dismantled Michigan State. When they dismantled some other teams as well. I forgot who the other teams are off the top of my head, but they have been elite this year. Baylor, they said they wanted to repeat, and they're 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 cooking up a storm right now. If they have another defensive performance like that which we're going to highlight here in one of these games here, you know, because unfortunately, you know, Baylor has to take on somebody this week. Some poor soul is going to get sacrificed this week, potentially, to Baylor. And, you know, now the Bears are number one. They're going to be the definitive number one, but can they keep it? Can they keep That's the big question. Big 12 play is coming very, very soon. The Big 12 teams, you know, that are in the conference, that are contending, are hungry to have a crack at Baylor. So we will see. But well, let's get into these games now. We're about nine minutes in here. Let's get into these games. Uh, Friday night. Yeah, most of the week, I, I know. Most of the week really doesn't have very many intriguing matchups. We're awaiting the top 25 and whatnot come out on Monday. But for the for the most part this week, stick to, stat, stick to Saturday. Stick to Saturday. That's all you're going to need for this week as really this is like the last week before Christmas, and there's not a lot of non-conference matchups left. So some teams are starting conference play. Some teams are still, you know, doing their big non-conference games. But the Big East, they're getting real into conference play this week. 
Villanova is going to take on Creighton and this Creighton team. They dismantled BYU out at the Pentagon Saturday morning. They, I mean, Ryan Hawkins, Ryan Nimhard. I mean, they're an interesting duo, you know, for the Blue Jays. And, and I mean, Jay Wright and crew, they got to bounce back. I'm looking for Justin Morris here because he's the guy that's really been, you know, stepping up for the Wildcats lately. You know, he's been the one that's scoring a lot of points and stuff like that, getting, you know, keeping this team cohesive around, you know, other guys like Gillespie and Samuels, really keeping this team cohesive. Creighton, you know, have not watched him yet this year. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to get a good look at him. You know, Big East, again, has completely, completely flipped the script this year, looking like it's going to be a dogfight. It's not going to be just building over this year. It's not. It's going to be a dogfight. Going to be a dogfight. That is going to start us off Friday night. And then Saturday, it's a big day. It's a big day. I don't know how I'm going to fit a lot of these games into it. Because, again, college footballs you know, they're steadily storming in with the bowls and stuff like that. So I don't know how all of this is going to fit. But we're going to make, a, we're going to make our best effort here. Try and watch some of these. Uh, but I'm breaking down, you know, these next seven here, these next seven games here. And let's go with the um, one of the games that starts today outright on Saturday. Purdue and Butler in the Crossroads Crack Classic. Crossroads Classic, excuse me, I don't know what I just said. Uh, Bryce Golden, Jer Bolden, this, this Bulldogs team has some pretty impressive wins. Remember, they beat Oklahoma, and this Oklahoma team just dismantled Arkansas. And just what I thought, you know, just what I thought Purdue was number one, just what a lot of people thought Purdue was number one. They're struggling. They're struggling. They're really struggling right now. Like, Zach Eddy had under, what, to hit under 10 points against NC State. He really didn't do too much, you know, get their loss to Rutgers. Jade and Ivy, you know, also very, very, you know, very, very good player that could compliment Zach Eddy. And, it, I mean, Purdue's got to pat the resume with something. This is, this is huge for the Boilermakers, that they could win their game in the Crossroads Classic, you know. Um, so it's going to be interesting. It's going to be really interesting to see. Um, I, I wanted to talk about Memphis real quick because they're taking on Tennessee and Alabama this year, or rather this week. It, it's going to be rough. I'm, I'm just going to tell you all right now. It's going to be rough for Memphis because, like, this Memphis team also lost to Murray State this week, and it's just been a free fall for them. You know, just disappointing. Michigan disappointing as well. You know, they they're six and four. They lost to Minnesota this week. So, you know, if you're wondering why I'm not talking about those two teams, it's just that they're completely disappointing teams. You know, um, Texas Tech Gonzaga in one of the um, Jerry Col Colangelo Classic, or whatever you call whatever you call the uh, the classic. Um, but it's one of those neutral site games. You know, I believe it's out like Phoenix or something like that. Uh, so, Timmy Holmgren, the Zags, you know, they're bouncing back, trying to bounce back. They got a victory against, like, Merrimack or something like that. You know, Merrimack's, you know, barely a Division One team. Like, they barely just got into Division One. Like, they, they, so this Zags team, you know, they, they've lost two of their biggest games. They need another huge W here, you know, with the way... You know, the West Coast Conference has been kind of faltering with BYU lately. I know St. Mary's and San Francisco are still, you know, they're still, you know, there. But BYU was a big one for Gonzaga, really, you know, trying to get the WCC with four bids and stuff like that. And I don't know if that's going to happen at this moment. But we'll, we'll talk about that later once we get the conference play. Um... And this Texas Tech team trying to find some type of cohesion. Terrence Shannon Jr. leads the way for them, and the Red Raiders they're gonna have, they're gonna have to do something. Because I mean, again, you can't have another game like you had against Tennessee. You cannot have another game like that. You know, again, Texas Tech had to be eating cupcakes before their game against Tennessee, and I believe they had lost one other game, if I'm not mistaken. But they they need both these teams need this win. They need this. Providence and UConn, another Big East Conference matchup. The Friars have basically coasted through non-conference play. Only one blemish against a bad Virginia team. And those wins against Wisconsin and Texas Tech are looking pretty good right now. And 
you know, with R.J. Cole, with Jordan Hawkins, the Huskies, they're also a pretty strong team. Again, the Big East is going to be a dogfight this year. There's going to be a lot, a lot of teams looking for the Big East title. So, this conference opener is key for both. Another neutral site game, Oklahoma State and Houston. And despite the ban from the tourney this year, Avery Anderson the third, he is a playmaker. Remember how Kate Cunningham was a playmaker last year for the Cowboys? Oh yes, definitely a playmaker. And if you watched Houston, Alabama, you know that Houston is going to be pissed after what happened. You know, at the end of that Alabama game, I, I, many people think it's either a goal to end or it was a block. I personally, I, I thought it was a goal to end at first, but I guess it wasn't. So, with Marcus Sasser, with Kyler Edwards, with Tremont Mark, who I don't think he did anything in that Alabama game. You know, this is a stacked Cougs team that's angry. They, they desperately, you know, wants to prove themselves. So I think this. You know, Houston team is going to be very highly seeded come March, you know, because, I mean, again, the AAC is looking pretty disappointing so far, and Houston might just run roughshod all over the conference, you know, despite the fact that the AAC has some huge wins, or rather the rest of the conference, but Houston, they, they're definitely going to be angry, and they're looking to take out their frustration on Oklahoma State, but Oklahoma State, you cannot, you cannot count them out for anything. And then if you and if you just want to stay up late and watch a beating, then yeah, Oregon and Baylor might be just your thing. Baylor's gonna be trying to whip this Oregon Ducks team, who just lost, by the way. They just lost their game to I think Stanford, so I think they're five and five now, you know. And this Baylor team, they got playmakers all around. Scott Drew and company are just, you know, trying to coast through the rest of the schedule right now before Big 12 play. And this is going to be key. You never know in college basketball because, again, the crazy upsets have happened to number one this year. We, we've already on, we're already on our fourth number one team. So, this one is going to be huge if you're an upset liker, you know, like myself because... Again, I'm a Texas fan. I, 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 Baylor, you know, somebody's going to have to knock out Baylor at some point. And maybe it could be Oregon. I don't know. But honestly, in all honesty, I think Oregon just doesn't have what it takes because the way they've been playing, you know, just isn't up to stuff. And if, and if, and if that happens again, you know, what happened to Villanova happens to Oregon. It might be even worse. You know, this Oregon team might only have like 20 points by the end of the night. So I, I, I genuinely don't know. I genuinely don't know if Oregon can keep up with Baylor. And then, of course, you got the CBS Sports Classic. Yeah, baby. Yeah. North Carolina, UNC. All right. Yeah, UNC. <laughs> uh, taking on UCLA. Uh, but this is a tough task for North Carolina ahead of them. Last time we talked about that was against Michigan. And they just whipped up on Michigan. And this is a stacked North Carolina Tar Heels team. A very stacked Tar Heels team. And of course you know UCLA is stacked. Of course you know you got J.B. Jack Wister. Of course you got Tiger Campbell, Johnny Juze. I mean, this is a talented, talented UCLA team that, you know, despite the fact that their flight got delayed to Marquette, they still beat Marquette. That's how talented this team is. Of course, you know, there's backup for these three guys at the guard position in Miles Johnson and Jules Bernard. I mean, these 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 two teams have a pretty cohesive starting five. A pr like a lot of other teams, you know, have been flipping around and stuff like that. But they're starting five. But the that these two teams, they're starting five. It's going to be legit. It's going to be one hell of a matchup in the CBS Sports Classic. And then of course you got you know R.J. Davis, Caleb Love, Leaky Black for the Tar Heels. And you know they're going to be half, they're going to have to guard these three guards for UCLA in Juice and Campbell and Jack West Jr. They're going to have to guard them, and they're going to need some assistance as well. These three Tar Heel guards from Dawson Garcia and Armando Baco. You know those two guys have also stepped up. You know this is these two teams have starting fives that you know honestly like. There's a lot of guys that could get drafted from just these 10 guys alone, in my opinion. 
And then the other CBS Sports Classic game, Ohio State turning a corner with EJ Liddell. Devastating defense, suffocating defense, the way Ohio State has been playing. And Kentucky needs another major victory. They don't have any. So Oscar Sheepway and company, they got to get it together. This, this roster is supposed to be stacked, and it's not stacking up properly with the W's that they need. And they're, they're going to need some W's quickly. SEC play is not going to be easy this year for Kentucky. You don't want another 9-16 campaign, do you now? So, we'll see. We'll see what the CBS Sports Classic has in store for us. We'll see what all these games have in store for us. Uh, we'll see what the top 25 looks like tomorrow. Of course, we're not going to talk about it here because it's Sunday. Um, and I you know, hope all y'all are having a good weekend as we are getting closer and closer to Christmas time. So, you know... There, there will be a week five preview. I was debating. I was debating. Do I do a week four and week five preview? Or do I just do week five on its own? And I was just like, okay. I'll just do week four. Because, I mean, again, there was a lot of stuff that happened, you know, in the third week of the season. So, I, I was just like, okay. Let's do it. So, with that being said, everybody. I'm going to get on out of here and skedaddle. I hope y'all are or rather, I, this should say week five, if I'm mistaken, but I, I can't remember to save my life. But for all intents and purposes, that is going to do it, everybody. I hope to see you all again next week. We're going to be going up to Christmas time, and then conference play starts the week after that for most of the rest of the country, because, again, some of the country has started their conference games, like the Pac-12, the Big East, Big Ten, you know, but the others they are going to be starting real, real soon here. It's going to be lit. I cannot wait for all these juicy matchups on New Year's and, 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 and you know, close to New Year's and stuff like that. We're, we're getting, I mean, this is really the last week with big non-conference matchups in my opinion. I mean, in all honesty, it is. So, we'll see how everything goes this week, and I'll see you all again next week, next Sunday night. Take care, everybody, and see you tomorrow for the NFL recap as well.